Hi guys, it's G Economics here. Welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about economic agents. When you're responding to an extended answer question, more often than not you will be required to discuss the impacts of certain policy decisions on the economic agents. And here they are. Households, the government, other institutions, which we'll talk about a little bit more, firms and the foreign sector. Now, those of you who have studied economics for a while, you'll probably be looking at this and you'll be thinking, ah, this is very similar to what is known and referred to as the circular flow of income. And indeed it is. I'm not really going to talk about the circular flow of income here, but I do have another video uh, which discusses that, so do have a little search for that on my channel. So this is just a very quick run through who the various economic agents are and generally the types of things that we tend to focus upon in our discussions. So households. We tend to think of the households as providing the labour for the firms and they go to work in order to earn an income and so we often therefore consider the household's role in the consumption element of aggregate demand. Remembering that aggregate demand is C plus I plus G plus X minus M and C being that consumption element by the households, generally on consumer goods and services. Secondly then we think about firms, we think about the firm in its role and in their role as an employer of labour which obviously comes from the households and the firms obviously produce goods and services which the households consume. So we think about the production element of the firm, we think about the employment element by the firm and the supply of goods and services into the market. Thirdly, we think about the foreign sector. So we're thinking about goods leaving the country and goods coming into the country. And again, those of you familiar with your aggregate demand equation, you'll be familiar with the net exports component, that X minus M element. And therefore we're thinking about X and M, the value of goods and services leaving the country and the value of goods and services coming into the country. Very important to note, and I've noted this on some year 10 work I've been marking recently, just because a country produces lots of goods and services for export and destined for export markets, does not of course mean that the foreign consumers buy those goods and services. So don't just automatically assume that you produce more export, therefore you sell more export. Coming on to the fourth component then is the government. Um, and the, the government's role in the economy obviously very substantial across the globe at the moment in the midst of the global pandemic. But generally speaking, we're thinking about fiscal policy, we're thinking about supply side policy. And then sort of wrapped up with that, we're also thinking about other institutions. So uh, key would be the role of the, the Bank of England and the central bank across across the globe, the European Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, etc., etc., in, in their role in terms of monetary policy. And then those of you who study development economics, you will obviously be looking at other institutions in more detail and their role. And it'll be interesting to see their widening role in, as we sort of come out of the, this global pandemic. So the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, the WHO, which of course Mr. Trump's been, President Trump's been uh, uh, threatening to withdraw the funding from, the World Health Organization, and other institutions such as Oxfam and other uh, standalone charities such as that, non-governmental NGOs as they're referred to. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is a slightly different video set up today, so uh, hopefully this will have worked. Um, if you're not a subscriber, please do uh, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Geekonomics, and follow me on Instagram, G underscore Conomics. Bye for now.